Today we're going to talk about LEDs, the very basics for guys who are just getting started. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, what's happening guys? We are going to talk about LEDs today. We're going to go back to the total basics and talk about LEDs for folks who are just getting started in electronics and don't really know how to choose and set up your LEDs, how to choose a resistor, set up your LEDs, what voltage to use, you know, what resistor you need to use, all that kind of stuff that can be a little bit daunting. Now this LED is a simple red LED and it's actually dead. So I'm gonna grab another one. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't set your LED up correctly. Well, I don't need these. Let's zoom out a little bit, okay. Now, I have the power supply set for 9 volts with no current limiting on it, okay? Now, the short leg is generally the cathode, or you can call it the negative. The long leg is generally the anode, but I'll tell you another way here in one second. But I want to show you what happens when you don't have current limiting. An LED is a current-driven device, and it will take as much current as you want to put through it until it burns itself out. So we are set for 9 volts here, which is a rather common voltage for um, you know home electronics experiments, learning and stuff like that. Nothing dangerous here, it's a simple 9 volts. This LED will probably light for about a half a second until it sucks as many amps out of the power supply as it can and then it will go dead. Ready? One, two, three. Did you see it? It blipped and it is now dead. It will it will never blip again. That's what happens if you don't set your LEDs up properly. Now, I promised I would tell you another way <clears throat> to tell your LEDs what side is which. Okay, if you look in there, see the big side? Then you can see over here, there's a little side. Tell you what, let me, let me draw it. It might make it easier for you. That's hard to see through there. So if you look kind of through the side, of your LED, you will see two pieces. They kind of look like this. Well, this is your anode, which is the positive, and the big chunky piece, that's the cathode or the negative. So wherever you see the big piece as opposed to the little piece, that's where you need to go. So how do we figure out how to set up our LEDs so they don't explode? Well, don't worry, there's a simple mathematical formula for it. But you need to know a few things before you can use that simple mathematical formula. And if you're buying your LEDs from somewhere like DigiKey, for, an for instance, well, then you can download the data sheets for your LEDs. Now, this data sheet is for 5 millimeter blue and green round LEDs. 5 millimeter, and there's their wavelengths. You can get all this good information. And then we can come over here to our ac absolute maximum ratings, and you can see our forward current is 30 milliamps. Now, 30 milliamps is the maximum. 20 milliamps is generally where you want to drive an LED. But I prefer to drive them even lower, around 15 to 10. And I'll show you and prove to you they'll be plenty bright. Not to worry. So that's one piece of information you need. That's the forward current maximum. Now here's our typical blue-green... Maximum, like I show us our typical. Oh, it's reverse current. It's not even in here, is it? Or am I missing it? Forward voltage. So, our typical forward voltage is 3.2 volts. That's called VF. 3.2 volts. And that is the voltage at which the LED will begin. To emit light. You need to know that. 
and then you need what's known as the IF, the forward current. In, in this case, like we're just we're just going to say 20 milliamps, and then you also need to know VS, which is your supply voltage, and in our case, it's nine volts DC. Now, when you know all of that, you can simply apply the formula R, which is what we need for our resistor, is equal to our supply voltage minus our forward voltage divided by our forward current. So with the information that we have here, we can say that R is equal to 9 minus 3.2 divided by 0.02 amps and that will give us R of 290 ohms, which I just write an R next to it. <clears throat> That's the proper way to do it. When you have all the information, like I said, if you buy your LEDs from a reputable place, then you get that information. Now sometimes, if you buy LEDs from somewhere off the internet like eBay, you can get the information. You can see there's our BF, there's our IF, but most of the time, what you're going to end up with is a bag of blank LEDs. That's what you're going to get for, you know, your, your $2 for 100 LEDs. So, how are we going to figure out what we're going to do? Well, it's not that hard. So, I'm just going to get a breadboard here. And I'm going to use this, which is a... Uh, variable resistor thing, but you can do, you know, a box of regular resistors. So let's start by putting in a yellow LED, long leg, short leg, and there's our big part, so that's our cathode. And we'll set it up like this with our red line closest. And we'll bridge the gap here. Then what we'll do, we'll just bring this in like here, and that goes there. So I'll show you what's going to happen here in a minute. Let me get set up. I'll be right back. We are all set up here. So we have the power from the power supply going into this red wire, which goes into my, I would call it a decade box, resistance box. And then it comes out through this orange wire into the anode of the LED. So we're putting a resistor before the LED. Then we're coming out of the cathode of the LED into these two, which are reading the current over here. Now I have our resistance set right now for 1K. So let's, uh, let's power this up. 1K is a good safe place to start for 9 volts and under. So 1K, you can see the LED is clearly lit. It's not super bright. And we're getting about 7 milliamps, okay? So now what you can do is adjust. Let's go 500 ohms, which 470 close enough you can see the LED is now much brighter we are at 13.7 called 14 milliamps let's drop down to a uh, three so you know 300 we can do 330 here three there we go 330 ohms and that puts us right at 20. So you see how simple it is. Start at one, one kilo ohm, one kilo, one kilo ohm, <laughs> and you can work your way down until you get right to the point you need. Now, here's the point that I want to make. Okay, we're at 330 ohms here, and you saw how bright that was. Let's go back to. 470 which is a standard 
resistor value. You can see we're set for four and seven. Now we're at 14.59 milliamps and that LED is basically, you know, the human eye can't tell the difference between that. And at 14 milliamps, 14 and a half, how we'll even call it 15, at 15 milliamps compared to 20 milliamps or 30 milliamps, your LEDs are going to last a lot longer. Okay, so let's say that you're not running at 9 volts, we're running at 5 volts. Alright, I'm taking it down to 5 volts here. And you can see we are back down to 6. Pull that off. And in this case, I would do, you know, right, here's what we'll do. We'll start at a 1K again, just like we did from the beginning. If I can get my fingers to work. So there we are on the 1K mark. And the LED is clearly lit, and we're only pulling 3 milliamps. Okay. Cut it in half. We'll say 4... 70, 6.3 milliamps, in this case let's go 220, that's 13 milliamps, I would leave it right there, you could go higher, you know you could go up to 100, we'll do that, bring it in, there's 100 ohms, See, now you're too high. So, it's an easy way to play around. Now, this is, a, you know, an LED, obviously, a yellow LED. And its forward voltage is probably about 2.3 volts or so. So let's take this same principle here, and in this case we're going to do a red LED, which has the lowest forward voltage. About 1.7 to 1.8 and we'll plug her in here and I'll show you how the same principle works once I get them plugged in the right holes okay and then once again we're going to start with a kilium we'll go back to our 9 volts It's taking me a second to dial it in here. There we are. 9 volts, 1 kiloohm. We're at 7 milliamps, and that LED is plenty bright. Let's cut it in half. Actually, let's not cut it in half again. Let's double it. Let's go to 2 kiloohms. And that red LED is still bright enough that you can see it in a bright room. Let's go 3 kilo ohms. Look at that. You're running at 2.3 milliamps. The LED is still plenty bright. Now look how bright that is. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera. Let me pull this off here. Let's go back to 1 kilo ohm. All right. Try and remember how bright that is. It's plenty bright for you to see in a daylight room. Now let's knock it down. Let's say 330 ohms. Now that's right about where they want you to be at 20. Now it's just, you know, annoyingly bright, which is fine for some applications but you're really going to run out. Now in this case, 9 volts, I'd probably go 470. Yeah, see that puts you at 14. That's good. But I'll tell you what, lately, in almost everything I do, unless I specifically need it really bright, for red LEDs, I've been going 1 kilo ohm. And I find that that 7 to 8 milliamps is plenty bright enough. The LED will stay cool, 
remember I said it is a current driven device so current you know equals heat the LED will stay cool the LED will live longer and really that's all there is to it I mean there's nothing super complicated you know you can certainly use the formula I showed you if you have all the information if not set your multimeter up as a current meter you don't have to have one of these like I said you can just you know put multiple resistors in there or a potentiometer dial it in till you find the sweet spot and you're good to go this applies whether you're working on a breadboard or with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi those are basically 5 volt devices so you can go off the 5 volts some of them are, are lower but just call it 5 volts to start out with and you'll be safe from there I promise alright hope you guys enjoyed this simple video if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons especially the new guys who signed up had quite a few this one thank you thank you very much and for you guys who have donated over PayPal I can't thank you enough each one of you is very special to me and I've sent you an email uh, thanking you and letting you know I'm here if you ever need my help. Okay? That's it. I'm out. Peace. Thank you for all your support, everyone. 2020, I'm hoping, is going to be a great year for us. Everyone who's supported through Patreon and through PayPal donations is fantastic. Um, everybody who's bought something from the Amazon store, that's what keeps this channel going. I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, you are a part of the team. Hey, feel free to email me, arduino0169 at gmail.com. I try and get back to just about everybody.